Good morning, my friends. I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. It is 2.15 a.m. I'm tired. I'm tired. This is a hot tent adventure. Right now, it's raining. Temperatures are going to drop throughout the night, throughout the morning. It's going to snow. How much snow? Who knows? Who cares? What's more important are the temperatures. It's going to get down to roughly 10 degrees tomorrow night. It's going to be cold. I am here for two nights. This is a trip that I'm excited to do, but it's not the trip that I planned on. Originally, I planned to go roughly two hours from here. The thing is, I went there. I've been driving for most of the night. I got to the destination that I wanted to go to, and it just didn't feel right. It just didn't feel right. As soon as I got outside of the vehicle, I don't know, I just had this feeling like, hey, this is not a good idea. So I turned around, I came back, as I mentioned before, I've been driving most of the night, but I am out here at Lone Wolf Mountain. I have everything set up. The tent is ready. My cot is ready. The stove is over here. I'm ready to set that up tomorrow. Since it's raining, I'm not going to fool with it. I think the plan is I'm going to go to bed, get some sleep, and I will bring you all back in the morning. I will go ahead and read you all the forecast real quick. Wind chill Saturday night into Sunday morning will drop into the single digits below zero. One to four inches of snow with locally higher amounts above 3,500 feet. Northwest winds 25 to 30 miles an hour with gusts up to 55 miles an hour. All right, folks, I'm going to bed. I will see you all in the morning. It's time to get some sleep. Good night for now, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let's see. It is about 8.30. It is insanely windy, as you can hear. It's chilly. It's in the mid to lower 20s right now. And this is the high temperature for the day. The temperature is going to drop again tonight, get down to 10 degrees, something like that. Man, it rained last night. It poured. Around four o'clock, it changed over to snow, and it's been snowing ever since. I have no idea how much is outside. I would guess not much. Here in a minute, we'll get up, we'll get the fire going. In fact, that is priority number one right there. We need to get a fire going. Let's do that now, actually. While I have the nerve.
<laughs> the fire is going and it feels amazing. Amazing. As far as the outside temperature, it is 23 degrees right now and it's dropping. I have a thermometer outside, which we will check on periodically. I have this thermometer right here and we'll keep track of the temperature inside. This really works well. You put an app on your phone, you push this button, you hit start. Right now it's reading 41.2, 41.4 degrees. It is 60.8 degrees in here right now, and it feels it. It is plum hot. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Biscuits and gravy time. The first bite's for you. <laughs> A few minutes ago, I dampened the stove, and that's because it was like 75 degrees in here. Talking about the stove for a second, you can see here that I have a paper towel draped across it. I've been using that to dry this tent. This entire thing was covered in ice, and as soon as I got the stove going, it started to melt. So for like the last hour, it's been raining in here, and I've been using this to dry my gear, dry my sleeping bag. It's definitely getting better. But the whole thing was just coated in ice this morning. A few episodes back, I was talking about how close the world is to nuclear war. And I figured that we would take a look at the United States Emergency Plan. It gives a basic summary of what a nuclear bomb could do. It talks about radiation somewhat. It says to get inside the nearest building, remove contaminated clothing and wipe off or wash unprotected skin. Think about the instructions here. Remove contaminated clothing, wipe off, or wash off skin. But it doesn't tell you how to do this. Get this. It says, continue practicing social distancing by wearing a mask and keeping a distance of at least six feet between your... <laughs> I think we can all laugh at that. That's pretty dumb. <laughs> These instructions have been updated recently, obviously. It says battery operated and hand crank radios will function after a nuclear detonation. That may not be true. If there's an EMP, none of that stuff will work. Engage virtually with your community through video and phone calls. What are they talking about? Take care of your body and talk to someone if you're feeling upset during a nuclear war. Many people may already have fear and anxiety concerning COVID-19. COVID-19 and a nuclear war are two different things. It goes on to give you links for how to manage stress and so on. That's interesting, folks. That's very interesting. I thought it would be interesting to look up that information on the government website. A lot of that is just bogus. It means nothing at all, which is a shame. There needs to be real world information there, but there's not. I don't think there's a need to go any further with this information. You can already see the caliber and the quality of that information. That's pretty ridiculous and kind of funny in a weird way. <laughs> kind of.
As you all could see here, I have processed all of the wood that I gathered last night. I gathered this before I turned in, and I am so glad that I did. Right now, it is 19 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and those winds, they're insane. I was thinking there, folks, we should go check the trail cams. It's been a while. I bet there's been all sorts of activity here on this mountain. Plus, I can't sit still any longer. It's really not that cold, it's only around 20. But those winds, man. I tell you what everyone, I'm going to hike, grab the other camera, but I'll go ahead and show you all what's on here. Let's see what's been out here, my friends. part everyone I'm in good shape there's not much to do out here it's too windy to be outside with those winds I mean they're like 30 40 gusts up to 50 miles an hour so I'm just going to stay put as far as firewood goes I'm in really good shape the key is to be conservative here especially during the day luckily it's sunnier than I expected so a lot of that heat from the Sun is just warming up this tent so I don't have to have the stove going wide open even though it's cold outside, even though it's 19 degrees right now. My plan is later on tonight when it gets down to around 10, that's when I'll get the stove really going. But until then, I'm nice and comfortable.
talking about the winds for a second, the warning is in place up until 1 a.m. and then things are going to die down some. I'll be honest, I can't wait. Basically, I've spent the afternoon inside of the tent. I had lunch. I was going to watch a movie, but I can't really even hear it. It has been so loud. It seems like it's calming down for at least the moment. I guess for now, I'm just going to kick back and relax. It's way too windy to be out in that mess. Let's do a wind chill calculator real quick. So, it's 19 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's just say winds gusting up to 50, not even the highest. That's negative 4.1 degrees Fahrenheit. I just had to solve an issue with this stove and this is what was taking place. So it's super windy, right? With the stove pipe here, wind was hitting it and it was coming down the pipe and blowing smoke out of the stove and filling up my tent. And because of that, I needed a way to block the wind and this is what I came up with. I was able to solve that problem with two items that I carry with me all the time. A piece of tin foil and a piece of wire. I tell you what, I've had a good time relaxing today, but I'm going stir crazy. It's not my style to stay put, and that's exactly what I've done with this trip. I've stayed put. By the way, everyone, you can see this stove that I'm using here, and you can see this table. In a previous adventure, I saw a few comments talking about how I was a brave man to use a stove like that on a table like this. The thing is, these stoves are designed for the heat to rise and for the bottom to be cool. I could stick my hand underneath here. I can even touch the bottom. It's not that hot. Imagine if the bottom of the stove got so hot that it could start fires. That doesn't make any sense, does it? What we have here, everyone, is a steak wrapped in bacon, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, medium rare, and on the side we have red and white beans, quinoa, tomatoes, corn, 
and dressing. We have good food, good friends, a good fire. It's cold outside. It's not really snowy, but that's okay. Let's give this a shot. Mm-hmm. More than likely, this is winter's last hoorah. One last little bit of snow. That's okay. I'm ready for things to warm up, and I'm ready to finish the shed. My son and I, we've been working on it. We're making excellent progress, and the episodes concerning it will be coming up soon. By the way, everyone, when it comes to Paul Molly, the maker of this tent, and the maker of the Stove Hut 70, I'll share with you all how that ended. So, the company, they sent me an email, we discussed this tent back and forth. They said they wanted it back. And I said, that's fine. I'm, I'm happy to send it to them. They sent me a follow-up message saying like, hey, once we get the tent and we see that it leaks, we'll send you a letter of apology. And I wrote them back and I said, hey, I don't care about your letter of apology. That means nothing to me. The Stove Hut 70 tent has a problem. It leaks. Everybody knows it. I've had issues, other viewers have had issues. The comment section on their own Facebook page is full of people with problems. There's a YouTube channel, I can't remember the guy's name, but he has like three different versions of that tent, even though the company says there's only two to me. All three of those tents are swimming pools. He never had a version of that tent that did not leak. But that was funny. They'll send me a letter of apology, like I'm lying about that hunk of that's how it ended, folks. I told the company I don't want their letter. I don't care about the apology. I told them that I was going to set up the tent again. I was going to film it in a rainstorm, pinpoint the leaking, and then send them the tent. Unfortunately, I never heard from Paul Molly again, and they did not ask for the tent back. That was probably a good month ago. With all that took place with Paul Molly, would you support them? Would you buy one of their products? Comment down below. This is a Paul Ali tent as well, and I purchased this myself. I like this tent quite a bit. It's not perfect. It does have some issues, but for the money, this is a good hot tent. Man, that's good. <laughs> that is freaking awesome. Let me tell you everyone, it is cold out there. It's about 14 degrees right now. And it's cold, it's cold. Once you factor in that wind chill, you definitely do not want to be outside. As far as the time goes, it's almost 7 p.m. And I guess I'm turning in. There really is nothing else to do. Now it's all about just kicking back, relaxing, even though I feel like I've been doing that all day. While sitting back, not doing much makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable, today has been nice. But I will say it has been uncomfortable for me. I'm not accustomed just to sitting down and not doing anything, and I feel like I've been doing that all day. Dinner was fantastic, and now it's time to watch a bad movie. Let's see what I have on here. I wanna say that I've seen this, but I have a movie called Light of My Life. It says it's an edge of your seat survivalist thriller. Set in a post-apocalyptic world, a father and daughter journey through the outskirts of society after a deadly virus has wiped out nearly all of the female population. Hmm, that's interesting. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I took a nap. The fire just about went out. Woke up freezing. It is cold. It's about 12 degrees right now. The winds are still howling out there. Things are starting to warm up in here. I have what I believe to be just enough firewood to make it through the night. It will be very, very close. By morning, that will be it. So my plan is basically in the morning, hop out of this bag, pack up, get out of here. <laughs> I've had a really good time. It's almost been like 
being on vacation. I've spent so much time just taking it easy. It was really nice. It was really nice. Everything about this trip just worked out perfectly, even though my plans in the beginning didn't quite work out. I don't know. You have to trust your gut, folks. You have to trust your gut. You may never know if your gut feeling was right or wrong or not, and that doesn't matter. But for myself, I got to the top of that mountain, and I was just like, you know what? This doesn't feel right. This is a bad choice, a bad decision. So I just turned around and I came here instead. And it has been perfect. Perfect. This was, more than likely, winter's last raw, And it's a good one. It may not be a ton of snow, but it's definitely cold, it's definitely windy. Well folks, I guess I'm going to brush up, call it a night, try to get some sleep. Yeah. I will see you all in the morning. Good night folks. Thanks for joining me for this trip. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let's see here. It is 4.59 a.m. And I just used up the last of my firewood. That's it. That's it. This adventure is over. It is 11 degrees outside. And this has been an awesome trip. I've been up for maybe... 30 minutes or so. I woke up cold, loaded up the stove, got it going. With it being so close to morning, I figured, hey, let's make some coffee. Let's call it done. This morning, let's make it powerful and let's make it nasty. Okay, everyone, the fire is going out. That's it. Just like that, the temperature drops. It's getting cold in here. I'm gonna have to get to work. Before I go, let me give some shout outs real quick. First off, to Ruth and Steve, thank you so much for the coffee and for the light. You both are awesome, awesome. Warren, thank you so much for the log tote bag thing. That really does work well. I used it on this trip. Thank you so much. Peanut, thank you so much for the tent, my friend. A review is coming soon, hopefully, hopefully. Greg, thank you so much for the birthday card. You're awesome, my friend, you really are. Thank you so much for everything. Also, thank you for the tea too. I appreciate it big time, big time. All right, folks, that's it. This adventure is coming to an end as it gets raging cold in here. This was a great trip. It was very low key, and at the same time, it was nice to be out in the cold, in the snow, in the wind one last time, because folks, it's about to get warm. Winter is over, spring is here. We may get some more snow, but I don't know. It's pretty late into the season. It's possible, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I want to take a second and thank you all very much for joining me for this trip and for all of my adventures. I do appreciate it. I look at these trips as I'm going out and I'm going out with my friends. So thank you so much for coming with me. If you like this episode, make sure to hit the thumbs up because it does help. If you want to support the Outdoor Gear Review, you can do so on YouTube, on Patreon. It is appreciated. Be safe, take care, get outside, strength and honor. Bye for now. Oh man, it's getting cold. <laughs> I need to get some clothes on and start packing up. The sun will be up in just a minute.